Meow everybody, Cantonese Cat here. I want to spend some time talking about assets that are already getting close to or if not already have broken their previous high, such as Bitcoin. Michael's strategy has also done that already. It's broken above his last cycle high. It's not the all-time high because it had made a pretty much of a very, very high all-time high here, here on the um, dot-com bubble. So it's not really all-time high for Michael's strategy, but it's making a higher, a higher high compared to last cycle. The question is, and also Ethereum is you know, basically doing very, very similar thing. It's getting pretty close to um, its previous all-time high here. The question is, how? what do we expect now? Is it like, how, when should we take profit? It's going to keep making a parabolic move. I'm worried that it could dump back down like another 80, 90, 95% to end the cycle. I, I really don't want to be exit liquidity when prices get up here, but how can you time the top? That's one biggest question that everybody's going to have. Now, I don't claim to be an elite wave um, expert or anything like that. There's such, there's such a thing as elite wave theory. And a lot of people are going to... Um, use that as a tool to try to figure out where price could end up being and also they're going to try to you know basically tell you yes elite wave is predicting the top is going to be here at this time elite wave doesn't to me like it doesn't really tell you that it's not really an exact science it's actually there's a lot of subjectivity to it it could be a very very useful tool but it's not really like an exact tool um, it tells you if anything i feel like elite wave actually tells you about the trend rather than tell you when things are, are going to top exactly. It does give you some clue in terms of where to exit, but I'm going to show you as to why it could potentially be problematic, depending on how you draw, depending on where you draw, depending on who you listen to when it comes to Elite Wave. I generally don't like to use Elite Waves. I see Elite Waves being used by a lot of different people. Some people are just going to be a lot better than others. Um, but it's still, even those people who are very, very good, there is still going to be subjected to error because... It is still subjective. You're looking at a pattern, you're trying to predict the future, and depending on where you draw the waves, it's still going to be subjective. One of the most common um, elite wave formations is going to be a one, two, three, four, five pattern. And if you look at the cycle that dates back all the way from um, the bottom around 2018 all the way to the top in you know late 2021, you can easily draw a five wave elite wave form from here to there. That's wave one, wave two, corrective wave. Wave three up here, which is going to be an upgoing wave. Wave three out of the five waves is going to be, you know, the most powerful based on the elite wave theory, based on the rules that it has set. Wave three is usually going to be the most powerful. It's the longest wave. And you also have uh, wave four right here, which is a corrective wave. And it's going to end up being uh, with a wave five, which is going to be shorter than wave three. And how far wave five goes is going to be also variable as long as it's you know shorter than wave three. That's elite wave theory for you. Now, in terms of where to expect, let's say if you're drawing a one two here, you're trying to see how far wave three goes. Um, you you really use this in conjunction with like elite wave theory to try to figure out how far wave three would go. Nobody really knows for sure. Um, the biggest thing is wave three is going to be the most um, impulsive wave and it could go a lot further than one would expect like you really cannot tell wave three is going to go that's just why i think is is kind of silly to time the top even using fibonacci levels things like that i don't think you really really can absolutely time the top because you just don't know we're not wave three is going to be down here which is still going to be longest wave longer than wave one anyway right or is it going to end like all the way up here which is still going to be a valid wave three you really don't know. There are some suggestions that if you look at certain Fibonacci levels, you expect, yeah, wave three is probably going to be a certain level. But for, for an impulsive asset like Bitcoin, that is very much subjected to global liquidity. You really don't know how far it's going to end. The biggest thing that I think Elliott Wave Theory tells you is actually where we are on the trend, I think. And if you can act, if you can accurately tell where you are within the current cycle in terms of Elliott Wave, if this indeed does turn out into a five wave form, it, it tells you a little bit in terms of what to expect. 
But does it really tell you too much more though? Not really. So for example, in the current cycle, you know that this is pretty impulsive price action. You know that something very, very impulsive happened from here going up here and you don't know how far it's going to go up. Nobody knows how far it's going to go up. It could go up for longer and higher than people would expect, or it could end up being subjected to you know any short um, shortening of the wave three, as long as wave three is the longest wave of the five. It, it doesn't really matter, right? But if I can easily see, this is the cycle bottom. I can easily see either you can either draw here or here. But again, I'm not an early wave guy. I'm just gonna basically make up stuff here. But this looks pretty good to me because I really think that most Elliott Wave guys are in agreement with me right now. We're at the cycle at Wave 3. We don't know how far Wave 3 is going to go. For I know Wave 3 could be ending today. And then Wave 5 could just be a little bit higher. For I know that's also a possible scenario based on Elliott Wave theory. Or Wave 3 could go all the way up here much higher. And then wave four could be a corrective wave, and then wave five could be you know a, you know just a little bit of shorter wave, but it keeps pushing higher. I really don't know. This is kind of what I'm you know on the conservative me. I'm thinking wave three could be around one point six one eight, and then corrective wave four could be back testing all time high, and then the wave five could be cut short you know somewhere around here, but it could potentially hit two point six one eight. Fibonacci extension level, and that could potentially be the end of the cycle. That's that's one possibility. But the the fact is, is nobody really knows. Um, you we right now we're at wave three, and this is very very impulsive. Matter of fact, you know within each of these Elliott waves, generally there's also a sub Elliott wave inside of it. For example, if this is how you end up drawing it, I'm gonna change this color here just to kind of help you a little bit distinguish between one and draw next. So for example, this long wave three here, you can also, a lot of times you can also draw a, um, you also draw a wave five ways here. So let's say that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's five. You can also draw a, a you know, a inside of one particular wave, you can also draw um, alien waves inside. Right now, I think this could be the, um, for for the whole alien wave right here, wave three right here, I think this could be wave one within this wave three. And we already had you know, a little bit of a correction. I think right now we're on wave three of uh, inside of greater wave three. And basically you're at the most impulsive part of this particular wave right here, of the the most impulsive part of the entire cycle. So who knows where, where it's going to go? Like nobody really knows. It doesn't, it's not really entirely helpful to use Elliott Wave without using other tools such as Fibonacci levels, try to pre predict and try to guess where the prize is going to be because nobody really knows. So it's not the most helpful in terms of trying to help you to time the exact top. All we know right now is based on that is that um, it, it's going pretty parabolic. And when there's a parabolic bull trend, you don't want to get in the way of it. You're just going to let it play out. And if there's truly a five wave, then theoretically, at some point, you're going to get a pretty big wave four correction. It could end here. It could end here. It could end here. Let's just, for example, for argument six, it ends at 2.618 right there. At some point, you're going to end up getting a wave four right here. And this is going to be the chance for whales to really kind of exit. For example, it makes a wave five up here. This is going to be a chance for whales to really start to exit right around here because of how parabolic move that goes up here. A lot of times what happens is a lot of retail ends up getting stuck at wave three towards the end because the narrative right here, right here usually is pretty awesome. Like it, the, the underlying asses is like the best thing ever. Everybody should get into it. Of course, it's justifying evaluation. Of course, everything is you know sunshine and and everything. At this point, that's when usually retail starts getting sucked in. Whales and institution usually enter down here, and by this point, they are, when they when they're looking at how high the the price has already gone up, a lot of them are already looking for exit strategies. I mean, you don't know how far away three is going to go, but a lot of times you you might end up. Having a lot of institution when they see wave three and wave four kind of thing, 
they were already looking for exit strategy. I mean, they're already in profit from here. They don't really care. Um, they could they could miss like another move up here. They don't really care. Some of them stay in, but a lot of times people are already looking for exit strategies here from institutions from whales. Whereas retail, they just got hyped up from here. They're gonna buy heavily here. They what happens even even retail who start you know capturing things here. They they initially they're a little bit scared like yeah you know Bitcoin is a speculative asset. I don't know if I want to buy so much. I'm going to buy a little bit here. Next thing you know, the price like went up parabolic and they make 300, 400% gains. And then when price up here, like, yeah, I think this thing's going to be keeping on going. I don't know. I'm going to put a little bit more money on it. But I wish I can, you know, get a pullback. What happens to human psychology when you get wave four down here? This is going to be a pullback where initially you might have a lot, you know, lower risk tolerance. You only want to use maybe you know, 1% of your overall portfolio to be something a little bit more risky, a little bit more speculative, like, you know, like Bitcoin, Bitcoin miners. And um, right up here, it becomes like 5% of your portfolio. You're like, oh, that's been doing pretty good. And, you know, why didn't I put more money into it? And you do, and you're looking for a pullback. And next thing you know, you do get your pullback. The pullback is going to be very painful. And you're going to tell yourself how smart you are for buying over here because, yes, you buy when there's, you know, blood in the streets, right? And next thing you know, your portfolio allocation, instead of being 5% up here, you end up selling some of the other assets, like your you know, S&P 500 index funds or cash or bonds, whatever it is that you have that generally felt to be more consistent with your risk tolerance. And you end up you know, allocating your, your, your um, portfolio to I mean, 10, 15, 20, 30% in this particular asset because just simply because you know, you've seen great things, you're hearing great narratives. And and next thing you know, it does go up, so it does validate your 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 theory here, but it doesn't go up by that much more. The majority of the moves are already done, and by then the whales are already looking for exit strategy. Let's say you know if it goes back up here a little bit, or it goes up to the next level, you're still going to make you know pretty decent, you know thirty percent, forty percent gain, or even up higher, you're going to make pretty decent like fifty or sixty percent gain. But the majority of like the big moves where you had like a few hundred percent gain are already done down here. Um, wave five is not going to be greater than wave three based on early wave theory. So a lot of people end up getting screwed. Next thing you know, you know, when 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 price is up here, let's say it only makes it down here, and price drops, right? You really started to have a big correction like it did here. And the biggest problem is when everybody was looking at the five waves here and when the wave five didn't really go as high as other people would expect what happens is when price gets down to here people start loading up more thinking that this is a higher low and i think this is just going to be a trick the wave five is going to go higher because why would it just be a little bit higher than you know the, the previous high here that's when people get stuck that's when people become exit liquidity i'm also going to show you something a little bit scarier this is bitcoin Bitcoin had this lows around here and has its highs around here. Really, it made its higher. Uh, the, the cycle top really was in November 2021, right? I'm going to show you something even scarier, which is what get a lot of people end up getting stuck. Michael's strategy is a leverage play for Bitcoin. They didn't really start stacking Bitcoin until maybe around like, you know, early 2020. And when you start stacking Bitcoin is when MicroStrategy really went parabolic during the last cycle. Now, if you're going to draw wave one, may, I mean, again, all of this is subjective, right? Let's say this is wave one. Okay, so we have a little bit of correction right there. And again, like it, it depends on how you draw, but this is the best wave one that I can see. And next thing you know, okay, so Bitcoin went all the way up here. So this must be wave three, right? I mean, overall, Bitcoin, this is February 2021. At that point, Bitcoin has not made a cycle high yet. Michael's strategy went parabolic all the way waking up to here. So is this the wave three for Michael's strategy? I don't know. And the next thing you know, you end up having a corrective wave four, which is pretty far down. But it never really made a higher high here. It made a lower high. So this is an invalid kind of thing. Like you can't just draw Elliott wave and expect it to go higher. I can't imagine on the last cycle, how many people look at this true Elliott waves from wave one, maybe using this as corrected wave two. It, it doesn't really matter, right? 
but this is a big parabolic move. Like, there's not really even any like way forward that I can draw. Maybe until like down here. The 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 problem is it never really made any clear five way structure, and a lot of people can get stuck right here. Now. Maybe the people know something behind the scene. Maybe they're already trying to take profit ahead of um, Bitcoin getting back to, you know, slightly back to above higher high. Maybe they think that this is a leverage play. I'm, I'm, I don't really want that kind of leverage. Maybe the whales already exited that bot in here that made a few hundred percents up here. They're already exiting. So wave five actually never materialized, unlike Bitcoin. This is quite scary. Um, for for you to use Elliott Wave to expect what's going to happen, like you really don't know. You really can't time the top necessarily. If you're looking for a wave four going all the way up here, you don't really get it. So, what I'm trying to say is Elliott Wave is very, 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 very useful. But I am a little bit scared sometimes to use it. I don't really talk about Elliott Waves that much. When I do, I usually try to pick the brains of some of the Elite Wave um, experts that, that that you see that are more successful than others. I mean, the league, I, like even me, I'm not an Elite Wave expert by any means, but I can draw waves. It, it's not hard to just use one, two, three, four, five, get on trading view and draw these one, two, three, four, fives for free. This looks valid for Mara. Great, right? But I don't. I didn't know how far wave three was going to go. I didn't know whether or not it's going to make wave five. Because Riot didn't. The same thing that I drew for Mara, you know, Riot actually never really had the same kind of thing. Like it, it, it didn't make a higher high. How do you know what underlying assets are going to do that and what underlying assets are not? How do you know that how something is going to follow one asset and how something is going to not follow one asset? How do you make how do you make sure that something is going to make a higher high and how do you make sure that something doesn't? You really don't know. I I think the bottom line is there are only really two big messages here. The big message is I think that based on probability wise, we're at the most impulsive elite wave of them all in this bull trend and we're not even really maybe potentially we're not even like really even halfway done we could be more than halfway done we could be less than halfway done but to me i think the likely scenario is this could be maybe about halfway or even earlier than that regardless i'm not sure about that right so that's why i haven't really bought any more bitcoin since down here that's why I also am really looking forward to just stop buying miners in general and just see how far price goes. Because I don't know how it, how far this impulsive wave three is going to go. I don't think anybody really knows that. It's silly to call the top because the top can be down here, it could not be up here, and nobody really knows. And you would also hope that there's going to be a wave four that's going to give you a better idea in terms of hey, maybe I should start exit soon. Maybe I should look for wave five. Although this structure doesn't always guarantee that it would happen. I just show you Michael's strategy didn't follow Bitcoin. Riot didn't really follow Bitcoin. Mara did, but you really don't know. So take home message number one is we're in a very, very impulsive thing. I don't, I don't want to try to bother calling for a top right now. I do have some Fibonacci levels here. You know, they're, they're cute and all. They tell you, yeah, you know, if it gets rejection, these are going to be levels probably you know, get, you can get potential rejections at. That's cute, right? You can use them. You can potentially use them as targets if you're going to end up doing swing trades and things like that. But you don't really know where the top is going to be. And I think it's kind of silly to call the top. That's that's message number one. Mes message number two is I, I don't want us to be exit liquidity. I want us to be aware that something like this happens. And I want you to know that the risk is a lot higher as price goes up a lot higher, not lower because there's just not going to be as much liquidity that's being pulled in into this particular asset. Um, I, I want you to be careful not to be exit liquidity. That, that's um, message number two. And um, message number three is that there's no guarantee that it's going to make a higher high, even after a big giant impulsive move here, even based on the wave theory, that could potentially be a higher high move that's going to come up next. But there's never a guarantee. None of these things are guaranteed. 
I, I just want you to be, you know, cautious and be careful and use elite wave theory. Now, for those um, elite wave uh, theory guys out there, I want you to um, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, obviously, I'm still learning. These are, as far as I'm concerned, if you're doing elite wave, it's still kind of subjective. You're still going to want to have alternate counts, alternate scenarios. You want to move like water. You don't want to just draw waves and expect it to happen. If it does, you look like a genius. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The idea is that this is a bull trend. And for bull trend, generally, there's, you know, a little bit of like a five waves right here. And the middle part of it is going to be very parabolic. That's the that's the bottom line. That's the message. I think that's where we're at right now. I'm not going to bother calling the top. But I'm, I'm going to maybe do another video to kind of talk about, you know, what kind of things I would use to try to call a top. But um, elite wave theory may not be what I might end up using. I respect the, the heck out of a lot of guys who draw, and gals, who draw elite waves. There's some very, very beautiful elite waves counts out there that I'm seeing for Bitcoin. I'm just ultimately impressed. But I just want to say that it doesn't always have to work out that way. And it's very important to be skeptical, be careful, and use other tools to try to protect yourself and to understand that the higher we go, the more risk is going to be. That's it. More than 20 minutes. Thank you for listening. Bye.